Deeper by Dane Ortland picks up right where he left off at the end of Gentle and Lowly. In Gentle and Lowly, Dane highlights the wonderfully loving heart of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, in Deeper, Dane Ortland helps the reader to dive deeper into their knowledge and, more importantly, their experience of the person of Jesus Christ. The subtitle of the book is real change for real sinners. This is for the Christian who feels like they are stuck in the same place today in their Christian walk where they were struggling 10 years ago, or maybe even way back in the distant history of the 1990s. As Dane writes, this book is for the frustrated, the exhausted, those on the brink, those on the verge of giving up. So the big question for this review is, does he provide genuine help for the struggling Christian? Or is this another vain effort to toss onto the pile of books on Christian growth because it doesn't actually help to connect you to grow closer to Jesus Christ? The first thing I think everyone should know going into deeper is this is not a comprehensive book on Christian growth. I think Lucas Kinchin's In Pursuit of Fruit is more complete on explaining and illustrating how a Christian grows fruit for Jesus Christ. Here's what deeper is. Deeper is a good, very long look at Jesus himself and how he saved us, and how he sustains us day by day. This book is about seeing what our relationship with Jesus means for my walk and my life today. So this book is not so much about what you are doing, but is it is about understanding who Jesus is and who you are in him, so you will have the right foundation for building a life in Jesus Christ. So you will have the right kind of soil in order to grow fruit. And let's be honest, based on Jesus's own parable of the four soils, the soil is extremely important for fruit production. God gives every single Christian the same glorious Savior. He gives us all the same redeeming gospel. He provides us all with the same illuminating Savior, but we don't all produce the same bountiful fruit. That varies based upon the soil or based upon our own lives and good soil comes from a clear vision of Jesus Christ and what he has done for us like understanding how Jesus is with us day by day Jesus binds himself to his people no expiration date no end of the road our side of the commitment will falter and stumble but his never does so in order to have a healthy walk with Jesus you need to understand that it must be based on who Jesus is in the fact that he will never leave us or forsake us even if we stumble five days or five minutes from now we have this wonderful quote from Jack Miller as well when you turn to Christ you don't have a repentance apart from Christ you just have Christ. Therefore, don't seek repentance or faith as such, but seek Christ. When you have Christ, you have repentance and faith. Beware of seeking an experience of repentance. Just seek an experience of Christ. Salvation and our oneness with Christ must never be about what we are doing right now or what we have done, but about connecting with Jesus through faith based upon what he has done for us. Therefore, it is not the quality of your faith that matters, but it is about the quality of the object of your faith. And as Dane shows us in this book, grace is, not, is really about you knowing who Jesus is, knowing how his great gospel has been offered to you freely. As Thomas Chalmers says, the freer the gospel, the more sanctifying the gospel. The more it is received as a doctrine of grace, the more it will be felt as a doctrine according to godliness. In other words, if you want to grow in godliness and righteous living, it start, starts by seeing the depth of the love and the grace that God has given to save you. It is not about what you will do for God and your obedience and your submission and your holy living, but change comes 
the more we're able to come to grips with what Jesus has done for us in his blessedly free gospel and the completed work of Jesus and his promise alone. Now, I could give you a whole bunch of quotes from Dane in this book because, like I said, he is a, he is a wonderful author. And this book, once again, shows off how well he writes. His, his narrative is just wonderfully encouraging. And I could read Dane Ortland books all day long to be encouraged encouraged in my faith in Jesus Christ. I did have a, a couple of issues, though, in, in parts of the book. Dane had a paragraph where he wrote, Every atom in the universe is managed by Christ, so as to be most to the advantage of the Christian. And then he continues along those same lines. I don't believe in that degree of fatalism where God is controlling and directing every part of the world down to the smallest Adam, because I think when you view God's sovereignty in that way, it has some troubling conclusions that contradict what the Bible really says. I also think he undersold God's love a little bit at one point, which is hard to imagine Dane doing, but he wrote, if you are a Christian, God made you so that he could love you. God didn't only make the Christian so he could love them. God made everyone so he could love everyone everyone. God is not like the tax collectors in Matthew 5.46. God is not like those who only love those who love him. But God has the greater love of loving both his friends and his enemies. Now, those are relatively small, minor mom moments in the book in what was otherwise very helpful. So I gladly recommend Deeper by Dane Ortland. It is a very nice follow-up to Gentle and Lowly. And since I love his writings and the quote so much, here's one more quote for the road. Whether you have ignored it, neglected it, squandered it, misunderstood it, or hardened yourself to it, the Lord Jesus Christ approaches you today, not with arms crossed, but with arms open. And this quote just illustrates how you can squander the gifts that you have been given. You can neglect the beauty of the gospel, but also know because of Christ's superior love that the moment you return to him, the moment you come running back to him in repentance to restore that friendship, he won't stand there with arms crossed being frustrated at all that you have done wrong, but he will have his arms open, ready to forgive you and embrace you in grace. And that's one of the wonderful lessons of Deeper, and that is the more we know about Jesus' love, the more it will make our eyes bulge out of our heads. We'll say that is too much, that is too far, but you cannot plumb the depths of Jesus' love. No matter how far you go, his love goes beyond our wildest expectations expectations. And if you enjoyed this review and you want to stay engaged in the wonderful world of Christian literature, I'd encourage you to subscribe to the Rev Reads YouTube channel.